Oh. Good day there everybody. This will be the next video in the sequence of river guides for the 2023 Avon Descent 50th anniversary race. So we're standing, sitting, we are here at Extract Weir to talk about two places on the river. Well, two main places and then a couple of places in between which aren't, aren't really that important. So uh, we left you at Northern Weir, which is obviously early on on day one and uh, it's the first thing you see. And from then on, you've got uh, basically, basically you've got the boring section of the race from that point onwards until you get to Katrine Bridge, which is 17 kilometers from the start of the race. Katrine Bridge is the, really the first obstacle after Northern uh, that you have to, uh, that, that, you, that you encounter. And uh, that is also a team's changeover point. And uh, sadly, it's also the only place on the whole Avon Descent uh, route that has ever claimed a life uh, during the race, which was in 1991, uh, somebody in a plastic, kayak was paddling on a very high year and came up to Katrine Bridge and approached the bridge from the right hand side of the river and came across the river sideways and got washed into the pylons and you'll see in the video that I linked below that the bridge is actually at an angle to the river so you come around a corner and then you encounter a bridge which is not parallel to the river it's not it's not perpendicular to the river sorry that uh that means that the water is not flowing directly underneath it, it's flowing at an angle underneath it. So you must line up the pylons through the bridge, which means getting to the left-hand bank before you enter the bridge or near the left-hand bank and then turning your craft before the bridge and then going through the middle of the bridge with the flow of the water rather than coming at it from the side and then trying to attack it from where the river is, which is actually at an angle because it turns at the same time as when you encounter it. So uh, the person, the person uh, was unfortunately not able to be pulled out of the water even though they had ropes on his boat and uh, were pulling him because the water pressure was so great that the, uh, the pressure pulled, it, pulled his boat downwards. And uh, that can't happen anymore now because when the water is high, like it was in 1991 and many years since then, uh, they restrict access to the bridge and they force you to portage around the bridge. Um, I'm pretty sure this year we won't be portaging around the bridge, <laughs> it's safe to say. Um, that usually only happens at about 2 metres, maybe 1.5 metres of water and above. And this year we're going to be at yeah, 0.6 or so. Now, we are very lucky in that the rain from last week has just hit the river uh, yesterday and we can see on the river gauge here at the tea trees that yesterday we had a huge kick in the water level and it went up to 0.8 of a meter in the tea trees i'm going to stand up because my legs are sore uh, went up to 0.8 in the tea trees and what that means is that now we basically will not have a, a river a race level below about 0.5 so that's very good as a base level and then what you also might notice right at this moment, it started to rain. It has just started to rain today on the Monday before the race. And it is forecast to rain a lot more tomorrow and then maybe be a bit drizzly up until the race. So it looks like the river is gonna be at, and this is the upper stage of the river, it'll be at 0.8 and then dropping 0.8 yesterday and now dropping to about 0.6 hopefully to about 0.6 and nothing below. With this rain now sustaining it at about 0.7 it is right now and uh, probably just sustaining it at 0.7 and then it will get down to about 0.6 and maybe 0.5-ish by race time unless we get more rain. So we're really hoping for some more rain because every 0.1 of a metre is about 30 minutes overall race time, maybe even more, uh, that's knocked off the race with, with uh, every increase in water level. So luckily this camera is uh, rain, rain resistant, so I'm gonna keep filming now. So we'll talk about the next obstacle down, down the river from uh, Northern Weir. And Katrine Bridge is something that you go through and it's just a bridge, so if you're not in a team, then you'll just shoot, shoot, shoot straight underneath and keep going. Uh, it's just mentionable because, as I say, at high water level, they force you to portage and it has been dangerous in the past, but all bridges are dangerous, all pylons, obstructions, obstacles in the water 
uh, are dangerous and especially ones that uh, uh, can have a downwards force like a pylon which will push you underneath if it's got lots of water pressure on the top but the water pressure is not high enough today to do any of that so the next thing after Katrine Bridge which is another two kilometers down I believe I just measured is Glenavon Rapids Glen Agon Rapids which is the first real rapids of the race which is actually another ford another another uh, man-made ford but it's not concrete like uh, northern we are so you approach Glen Avon uh, with caution <laughs> at this water level you'll find that it will be quite rocky and have defined chutes so Glen Avon is a section of two a section of two fords or two crossings one after the other and you must approach the first one on the right hand side of the river and you'll see a few defined chutes it's quite bony basically but once you have once you have the first chute negotiated you'll be in a section in between where you must turn left and then go over to the left hand side of the river and you'll see a defined chute on the left hand side which usually has a big hole on the far left so don't go too far left um, and then be ready in past years we've had a tree that comes down hangs into the river and you must graze that on your left hand side and miss it to the right there is an eddy there you can easily get spun out on the right hand side of the river so be ready for an eddy to pull your boat around or to suck you I guess out of the main current uh, but as I say there has been a tree in the main current in the past so look out for things un uh, overhanging which I think they've gone now I think it was washed away probably three or four years ago so uh, simply come down the right hand side of Glen Avon or where you see most of the water coming and then you'll see most of the water heading over to the left and then down a main chute there's a big hole keep your paddle in the water that's your first test of a, of a stopper a big hole with maybe some rocks and a big wave and that'll be uh, surprising because you haven't hit one since northern <laughs> and uh, you'll need to have a brace stroke ready keep your paddle in the water I can't stress that enough that is 4k's upstream of right where we are now Glen Avon Rapids so you'll claim come through Glen Avon Rapids you'll go under Dumbarton Bridge and then I think it's actually four kilometers from Dumbarton so it's a few k's down from Glen Avon you'll get to Dumbarton uh, road bridge and then four kilometers from Dumbarton bridge you'll you'll come down here in Mallard pool and you'll be at Extracts Weir. Extracts Weir is one of the big five rapids of the race it is man-made as you can see it's got uh, pillars at the top here and a concrete uh, uh, weir uh, uh, dam wall at the top here uh, we'll go down to the bottom in a moment and you'll see the actual chute itself. I mainly wanted to come up here to explain to you guys the portage area, which is always right where I'm sitting now. I'll, I'll get up and point to it in a moment, but all novices and this year, I'd suggest every competitor in the race should portage uh, Extracts Weir. It is far too low to come down without definitely, definitely hitting rocks. And unless you want to put holes or scratches or dents in your boat, and have a really uh, slow it's not going to be wild it's not going to be huge waves and, and crashing through things like you might have seen in the past I'll link to a few videos below of um, the big water which it is, it is it is exciting and in very big water the trees come down here right down the left hand side you'll see a lot of water coming down there and it's actually by far the easiest way to shoot this rapid to shoot extracts we are I'd say in any water level in the middle section there is Williamson's Weir where the uh, power boaters uh, have made a chute which is exciting and fun but uh, I'd say the more dangerous the more um, uh, complex of the two options you've got a central chute and a left hand chute there used to be a right hand chute no more there used to be pipes across the river no more and uh, those pillars are still there you, the, the middle chute you'll see is just to the left hand side of that left hand pillar so we'll go down the bottom in a moment but for now, I want to talk about portaging because basically everybody will be portaging uh, on race day on uh, Saturday coming up. So you'll, you'll pedal around the corner here and you'll want to get onto river left. As you see, the current is not very strong, so you'll easily be able to come out here. You want to come around this bank because this bank, if you see, has another little bit of water before you get to the real bank. So don't, don't jump out of the water here. Come around this bank, boom in here back upstream a little tiny bit I mean you can go down to this you can go to this bank down here but it's very close to the main chute and it's not a very nice jump out so pop out over here you'll see it's pretty flat pretty easy to get out drag your boat up there are star pickets which will have a fence a flagging fencing around it so 
I believe you can't even go here if you wanted to. So jump out here or here and then drag your boat. Don't worry about picking it up. If you have a second person there, then maybe get them to help you out if they can. Drag your boat through the flagging and we'll go around there now to, uh, to see where we will be taking our boat. Remember this is a 360 degree video so you can pan around in all directions and see me from behind or in front and whichever direction. So we're now in the portage area. See it starts over here which is silly and comes over here. So I guess you could theoretically jump in, jump out of the water over here but I do not recommend that. Jump out of the water over here, back upstream a tiny bit and you'll have a, you'll have a good time. Now we'll go down to the bottom of the weir and show you the way through if you do decide to shoot it. As I say, 0.6, anything below one meter, do not shoot extracts weir unless you want to have a, uh, a rocky and exciting, well, <laughs> touch and go sort of time. So this is the portage shoot here. It's quite a long way. You will uh, probably want to jog with your boat Everybody should be out of this channel. Feel free to yell at people to tell them to get out of the way. It's a race, it's a race, of course. There will be spectators and commentary team up here, of course. And if you see, they make you get in way down here. Now, if you have a chance, don't, uh, don't blame me if you get in trouble, but I'd jump in down here because it's a long way to Tipperary all the way down here. So we are gonna stand a little bit further away from the chute so that you can hear what I have to say. So, in a flooded, in high years, where we're walking right now is where we paddle. So if we see here, we've got the two defined shoots. Now I'll set up the camera here and we'll have a chat. So, here we are at the bottom of Extracts Weir and we are currently located where the uh, channel comes when you're coming shooting down here in high water. So we see on the river left, which means the that side of the river <laughs> coming downstream, there's a little channel right now, a little bit of water coming down the far left. Now in high water, this is the correct way because these rocks are all underwater and we can come straight down in this direction. And that's, if you look at a video from uh, 2019, I believe it is, I almost hit that thing, that stick there, or maybe it's that stick, I think it's that stick there in fact. So this is the way, come down here. As you see right now, not enough water. There is a chute in the middle. There is a chute which was created by the power boaters to enhance excitement and create a path down the river in low water. It is unfortunately very difficult and the year after they created it, there was a huge flood and most of the rocks were washed out the way. So there's a huge drop at the top, if you can see that, and then Halfway down, there are some rocks, and at the bottom, there are another. There's another huge rock there now, which is maybe a, a change for this year. First time I'm seeing it for the year. After a few floods and bushfires, of course. And then we come down into the pool here, which has another rock, which has a great, great sounding noise when it knocks into your boat, which uh, split the front of Chris Smith's boat, Chris Smith's boat, uh, a few years ago. And uh, I whacked it good the same time, about mm, two minutes after he did. So. As you can see, the middle chute is defined. It is the way, if you were to shoot this today, you would probably come the middle. You, you could shoot the old Vindex chute, we call it, which is on the right river right side here, which is where we used to shoot it in the 90s, before there was a middle chute, before the left-hand chute was really a goer, and I mean lower water, maybe about this water level, in fact. We used to come down this right-hand side here. I've only shot it once or twice, and uh, because I started paddling in 2004, so it was already not really a way and there were pipes across the river by the time I started paddling. Uh, so you would, I would say never go right side nowadays because when there is enough water to go over the right side, the left side is better. In the middle is a way, very difficult. So portage down the left, hopefully come down here. If you can't come down here, follow the flagging all the way to where you jump in past this pool into the next pool which as I say, is a bit of a portage, and if you don't like portaging like, like, like me, uh, then I would hop in at this point right here. So, Extracts Weir is that sort of first obstacle that I figure is the one that you'd turn out on. Glen Avon is, is, is a 
is a duty. Glen Avon you could turn over in, but if you know what to do and you've uh, made friends with your boat, if, you, if you're uh, competent and you feel confident in your boat, you'll be okay in Glen Avon. And as I say, portage extracts and you'll be okay here too. You, you don't want to shoot this anything below 1.5 meters. And right now it's 0.7 and it will be dropping. It'll be coming down. It might, might stay at 0.7 with this rain coming tomorrow, but it will definitely be lower than this for race day. So have a look. It will not be as good as this. It'll be worse than, worse than this. So after Extracts Weir, we have 2J Town, which is just behind us here, basically two kilometers from where we stand now. And we're not gonna worry about going to 2J because everybody can go and see the town for themselves and there's no rapids, there's a, a, a few bridges and, uh, and, a, and a spot to come out, uh, jump out and get lunch. But uh, that's about it, no obstacles. There's 2J rapids after 2J. It's just a, a gravel bank, a, a gravel bar sort of thing that you come down at this water level. 0.7 or 0.6 maybe even 0.5 you will have no trouble just pick where the water main water goes you will have learnt by now that the channels are shallow and you must pick the deepest part of the channel and that does change so uh, 2J Rapids will be no issue so 2J Rapids is really the last thing uh, on the first part of the river and then after 2J Rapids we get into the tea trees so from this video we'll hop into the Wetherill Park section of the of the race and we'll talk about that from here on see ya